Oh, alrighty, hello and welcome, everybody. Yeah, I must say, so anyway, I just started blasting. I think I found maybe basically the final key piece of this deck. There's another variation I might show you guys uh, near the end of tonight, but Terror of the Peaks, it, it does the trick. When an addition to an already existing deck elevates it to the point where you literally don't care what the opponent's done, what the opponent is doing, because we're just hitting them straight to the face multiple times tonight, and I was grinding, well, all day, really, before the stream. Uh, Galta, 2 green, 12 damage. If that's not enough to do it, well, 2 copies are. I had one instance of a game where I was able to play the first copy of Galta with the Terror out, with Gwenna. Boom. Galta is free. Well, 12, 12 damage for free, I should say, which is even better. So yeah, two Galtas, 24 damage in total, gets the job done in a lot of cases. Doesn't matter what creatures they have, maybe you have to take out a key creature. Usually not, you just hit them. And this deck certainly hits pretty darn hard. Oh, Victor, how's it going? Y yes, I was just saying, I think this is, this is getting pretty darn close, I must say. Super focused on exactly what the deck wants to do, no funny business to start off with the main, no real protection, not a whole lot of interaction other than technically Terror of the Peaks. But again, like I said, hit them in the face for 12 for free. Storm the Festival? Uh, one day, someday. I think I should, actually, Victor, because Terror of the Peaks is five. Maybe tomorrow night, Storm the Terror. Terror of the Storm, something kind of ominous and cool sounding. But yeah, it, I mean, clearly, clearly it makes sense with Terror costing five. Great synergy with that Storm the Festival. Maybe we grab two Terrors off the top, of course, that would be absolutely nasty. I think that would be a total of ten. Each Terror would check itself after it enters the battlefield. Either way, it would be good. It makes sense. I should possibly even add a couple copies one or two to this list that I have right here. But for now, well, we'll see. We'll see. I still want to keep Galta even if I do a Storm the Festival list. Of course, like I was mentioning, big body, sometimes free because of Gwenna, and sometimes 12 damage for free with Terror of the Peaks. That's got to be pretty decent. It has been tonight. There is a new re-edition, and I must say it's been doing the trick to keep up the ramping, and it's a creature. Popeberry Stomper. I brought it back in, and that really seems to have shored up the early game fantastically. Topiary Wayward, and maybe mm, not quite as many lands as other people would use with Wayward. Excuse me, with Wayward uh, playing an extra land to turn, but it's not so much there for the extra lands as it is a cheap body that has five power that often easily is being turned on because there's a very good chance that we get to 10 permanents. So it's quite fantastic for that. Two Storm, yes, yes, two Storm. Yeah, I'll look at it tonight. Um, we'll pretty much just jump right into things. Everything's basically the same. Lead the Stampede actually was another fantastic addition, I must highlight, absolutely. Since the deck has 33 creatures at the moment, sometimes it's been 35, 31, but when you have 33 creatures, Lead the Stampede does the trick. I think the lowest number of things I've drawn today was three cards. Oftentimes it's four creatures that I'm drawing. A couple of times it's been five. I mean, three to draw three. That's pretty darn good. Anything past that is stunning. Fantastic. Maybe, you know, late game we have too many lands. This digs past some of those lands, grabs tons of fantastic heavy hitters. It's been lovely. Maybe we use our lands to play lead the stampede. We still have Gwenna left over to play the creatures that we draw, untapping. You get the idea. So I could see myself maybe upping it to two. I don't think I would ever go to four. Usually I only need one lead the stampede. Refills with enough gas to get the job done in a lot of cases. But yeah, it's pretty simple, straightforward, very super linear. Sideboard is where it gets a little bit interesting. Nothing too crazy, but I must highlight... Well, Bouncer's Beatdown is still in there. 
Battle Mammoths. I'm looking at stuff that has 5 power, 6 power, all that sort of thing. To synergize with Gwenna, just to elevate Terror of the Peaks big creatures. And I have been toying with using Battle Mammoth at some point here. Whenever a permanent you control. So Planeswalkers, lands, creatures, everything. Whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Absolutely lovely stuff. Especially if we don't feel safe turn two playing, you know, Huntmaster or Marauding Raptor. Uh, we suspect a sensor, uh, something that is going to answer them. We could potentially safely foretell Battle Mammoth for two, use it as a later turn, which is going to be quite lovely. Of course, foretell when we cast it for two and a green that reduced cost. It also takes into effect Marauding Raptor. So we would be casting this Battle Mammoth for three later on with one of those. And also if we have two Marauding Raptors out, Battle Mammoth does sit at five toughness, so it would survive two pings. But the more Battle Mammoths you have, the better. It has Trample, it's big. It's uh, drawn us even more stuff against certain decks and we certainly have faced a lot of single target interaction. It's around, it does the trick sometimes. There may be nothing you can do but I'm excited for that. Everything else, uh, nothing too crazy. I really just added uh, Chandra's Incinerator here as a reminder. I may not bring it in tonight, but I have to highlight the potential. Think about this. It costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponents this turn. Of course, we could do one hit with Tear of the Peaks. Maybe we play Shifting Ceratops, you know? Five damage to their face with Tear, reducing... Chandra's Incinerator to one red. Incinerator comes down for that. Six damage with Terror of the Peaks. Boom. And then six damage to some creature. It gets nasty, out of control. We may not even need Chandra's Incinerator, especially if we're hitting the opponent for so much. But in a pinch, we could be playing this thing for super cheap if we play it for one red with Gwenna. Of course, we're going to be actually ramping say we tap her for two red we'll be left with one she'll untap tap it again you get the idea it's fantastic it's explosive and also oh gadrak i almost forgot if we have to deal with flying things i think gadrak certainly makes sense two and a red for a five four flying lovely stuff we can't attack unless we control four more artifacts we may never get there but it's just a big defensive body at the beginning of our end step, create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn. That seems pretty fantastic to me. So on the opponent's side or our side, we could ramp. But again, a big, big flying body. That seems pretty decent. And again, it looks kind of like a dino. Similar to Terror of the Peaks. Hmm. All right. I say we jump into it. Got uh, another copy of Brotherhood's End. Four total sweepers. Darmian or Kabolis if I need a little bit more counterspell protection. Yeah. Other than that, it's going to be an explosive night. A blast, I must say. Oh. We're getting there, folks. We are definitely getting there with this list. I can almost guarantee you're going to see some of the most nastiest, disgusting plays ever with a dinosaur deck. And again, not a whole lot of decks can elevate Gwenna, potentially Terror of the Peaks like this. Maybe it, there could be a Gruel mid-range with Gwenna and Terror and all that stuff. But I think the fact that it's dinosaurs, that might be the best shell that fits for Gwenna and Terror and all those things. Just because we naturally have so many fantastic heavy hitters. Odakan. Hmm. I'm going to keep it. Uh, I like the looks of that. We got three lands, two Kioras, which might be a little bit funny. Certainly doable. If we get a fourth land, we could get Regis or Alpha. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks. Hold off on going Besaju just in case we get, you know, a third land next turn. May not have to go with that. Looks like it's just general gruel. Terror just wins. Oh, Marauding. Yes, yes. It does, it does. I took out Polyraptor for tonight, but uh, yeah. 
you just go infinite. You really don't have to go infinite. It's probably only requiring um, three or four polyraptors, especially if you've dealt damage to them. I gotta say, it's it's probably three or four polyraptor hits of five damage each with terror. Boom. I think it's a fantastic finisher right on the spot. Hopefully we go kind of fast because this is a little painful. Luckily, Kiora is still sticking around. At least we draw a card when we drop Wayward. Not nearly as explosive as I would like. Hopefully we get to that fifth land next turn. A fan of all is sunny in Philadelphia. A little bit, Trainer James. Yes, I was figuring some of you guys would get that reference. Uh, Terror of the Peaks. Yeah. Sometimes you just pop off. You start blasting. Anyways. Fifth land. Let's go. I haven't watched too much uh, Sunny in Philadelphia. But I like it. The stuff I have. Ooh. And we'll still go with Kiora. At least that will soak up maybe some aggression from their stuff. Hmm. Oh, absolutely hilarious. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it's not for everyone, that's for sure. You just have to know what you're getting into uh, before you watch it, because it could probably catch some people off guard. You either love it or you hate it, I guess. But it's got to be pretty good since it has been around for oh, how long now? I really would like a sweeper. Next game is going to be fantastic. Brotherhoods and or Anger of the Gods. Going to do the trick. The question is, uh, yeah, Terror of the Peaks. We could drop Galta next turn for 12. Regis or Alpha probably to maybe drop the Reckless Stormseeker and Scavenging Ooze now that I think about it. If we're still alive, of course. Oh, 2005. It's crazy. In this day and age, when uh, shows get cancelled two seasons, one season into it, maybe they last for three seasons. If it's still around, it's basically guaranteed to be good, I must say. Well, that's painful. Hmm. Now, we're not winning this one. No siree. Ouch. But we know what we have to do. We've got the pain, the stuff. Could see Domri maybe taking him out. Some things. I'll drop lead the stampede at least. One Domri. Two Huntmaster. Okay. Maybe could have done all Huntmasters, but. I like to keep the hope of an explosive start alive just because I am playing for e ooh. Not gonna do it. Oh, I know what I'm keeping. My goodness. I think it's gotta be Terror of the Peaks, unfortunately. Yeah. Play it safe. It would have been nice to be a, a little bit greedy there, but just in case, keep all these things at three and we'll smoke them. See how many creatures they've played, but it still should be safe to go with Cure and get that card draw from Wayward and Regisaur. Hopefully drawing another land next turn. Or the turn after that. Yep. I don't imagine all those elves are going to attack Cure. Maybe just a couple of them. Could be Questing Beast coming down. Which would mean Cure is... Oh, really? Now that is interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can go Regis or Alpha, which is quite nice. Probably just... Wayward. I'll go with Wayward, and we'll see what happens. 
save Huntmaster because it would die to Brotherhood's End. You know what? I'm going to go Huntmaster. Maybe they use removal on Huntmaster. Wouldn't be so bad. Obliterating Bolt. Well, I'm quite thankful for that. A little bit of a waste. Four damage to take something out that would have died to a stomp from Bone Crusher Giant. Quite exciting. Hmm. Don't know what to do. That's going to set them back. Hopefully they don't have uh, Heroic Intervention. Oh, I thought for a second there. They had two mana untapped. It was pretty scary. Oh, yes. Pay two life. Get her down. Get it down. That might just be it. Never leave home without a sweeper, I guess. Boom. That's how you do it. I don't see him surviving this. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. But we know what we have to keep in. Absolutely. Seems they have a lot of, well, decent removal, especially for Tear of the Peaks. I'm actually going to trim Hunt Master. I'll bring in... Couple battle mammoths. Yeah. Nope. That's pretty slow, but I'm going to keep. Got four lands and two terrors. The ultimate terror. If we can get just a touch of acceleration, we'll certainly be off to the races here. We got five, at least. So we will eventually be seeing terror if, you know, we're still alive at that point. Reckless Stormseeker, that's going to be painful. All right, let's see. Uh, Topiary Stomper, Wayward Swordtooth, of course. We got plenty of lands that would allow us to see Terror of the Peaks on turn four. Ouch. Yeah, that uh, that certainly certainly will do it. No, sometimes they just uh, you don't see any of the early stuff. It was fast, I will say. But you saw the importance of that sweeper in that second game. Whether it's Brotherhood's End, Anger of the Gods, maybe something a little bit more powerful, a little less powerful. Uh, usually, it's good to have some amount of that somewhere in the mix probably in the sideboard because some matchups it's going to be mostly useless unless you are looking to deal damage to your creatures and there's not a whole lot of decks other than dinos with enrage hmm. which reminds me of ripjaw raptor i've missed that guy it's been quite some time since i've used it whenever it's dealt damage draw a card Seems that maybe I just don't need it, especially with all the card draw from Kiora. Simply draw stuff, doing stuff we already would have wanted to do with Topiary Stomper, Wayward Swordtooth, Regisaur Alpha. I think Kiora might, might be better. She ramps, she draws, all that lovely stuff. I could risk it. We got to eventually uh, getting to... Three for Tope. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Risk the dino. This certainly looks like a blast of a hand. No turn one thought sees. Huh. Well, that's a nice thing. Mono black. Something. Oh, that's painful. Oh, I got to shed tears for that. Huntmaster probably was dead to Fatal Push or some sort of removal that we would have played. 
third land next turn let's go luckily they haven't done a whole lot of stuff maybe it is just removal they have something they can play this turn they're wondering about uh, holding it back I think it's gonna have to be lead the stampede we certainly have enough creatures in hand definitely well, well we might get there I'm just happy they didn't slam down a creature oh Demir zombies well oh no 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 this is not good as uh, yeah yeah we'll, we'll pack it in we won't show them exactly what we're all about a little bit unfortunate even when you have 22 lands uh, sometimes situations like that happen but again we're facing a pretty cheap aggressive list with zombie tribal bouncers beat down so certainly that should provide the beat down for the most part strongly zombies are in black so that will be fantastic i must say hmm hunt master again i say we do that whenever bringing in the sweepers hunt master lead the stampede as well a decent amount of non-hits non-creatures i should say one terror i still like to maintain all three copies of gwenna as much as possible we see her at any time just turns the deck on absolutely maybe it will be a little bit similar to that gruel matchup hopefully you know in our favor game three that's the keeper big time Kiora and Topiary. Now, we'll see if we draw more lands, something like that. Uh, probably Kiora, turn three. If they haven't dropped too many zombies, they might be able to easily take her out or, again, have some removal. It's pretty interesting to see them not play anything, really. Perhaps just continually holding up that mana to remove somebody or counter it or whatever. I imagine they'll do something here. We have that other land in hand, so we're guaranteed to get to five next turn for terror. I think that's the way to go. They don't have anything instant speed removal, which is nice. Popiary, cure the turn after that, untapping some lands, playing Galta with all that cost reduction. Hmm. I think that person's going down. But say, Drew, it is terror. If they don't do anything, um, they may be dead. They will be dead next turn. We go Galta, Galta, lethal. Look at that, folks. Person's not like, oh. Everyone watching right now, later on, this is exactly why you use multiple copies of Galta, because we win. That's it. How amazing is this? Galta for three, Galta for two. Boom. That's okay. Yes, I am sure I want to play it. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, that's probably why stuff like that is why Terror of the Peaks is still sitting at $40 US. Roughly $40 US. No, something like that. It, it's still expensive, yes. That, I must say, that's uh, that's pretty legit, Victor. Literally, it wouldn't matter. Wouldn't have mattered if they had 10 creatures attacking wouldn't have made sense oh no oh no five mana for 24 damage to the face value 
we beat them without showing the fact that we have the sweeper as well, which again, I mentioned before is fantastic. If you can take a game from them, hold back that key piece of detrimental silver bullet -ness. Hmm. Yeah. No. And you guys are going to love the variation, the Jund variation that I'll probably use tomorrow night. Also with uh, Storm the Festival, kind of mix that in. But some of you might know the black card, the black creature, legendary from um, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, that first set. Why can't I think of the name? Hmm. Yeah, I'll show you. Uh, oof, whoa. Okay, that's, uh, if they don't interrupt us, bad things are going to happen. Certainly a keeper. Four lands, we got Marauding, Gwena for two. Actually, ah, uh, yeah. Turn three, I could go Wayward for two, playing two lands, and then Gwena for two, but I really would want to hold Wayward back, playing it for free the following turn, because Gwena is going to untap. Spend two, get two back. Oh, boy. They better have removal, or else they die. That's what I love about this list, especially. If you don't stop us, you're definitely dead. More so than any other list of dinos I've made. Lovely stuff. Okay, this still could be painful. Certainly we're not blocking. Shelter ticket has to come into play tapped at some point. We still have that two left over for Gwenna there. Hmm. At least when we do play a creature, hopefully uh, Gwenna is still alive, but she's going to get to four toughness, surviving the Brotherhood's end or anger of the gods. And any death triggers that they have won't trigger with anger. And oftentimes I think, oh, the double blade stitch scab. We'll have to sweep them next turn at this point. Zombies have a lot of fantastic lords, I must say. Do I want to take all that? You know what? I'm going to take all that. Interesting. All right, Gwenna, let's go. Let's play extra lands this turn as well. One of the blades stitched is definitely going to be blocking marauding. 11. I like 11. Yeah. Hmm. I imagine one blade stitch is going to stop Marana because they probably don't, yeah, they don't want to take eight. So we dropped their total power, whatnot. We have enough lands at this point. We'll cycle Shelter Thicket next turn, get something good, I hope, uh, something that can save us. Wayward Swordtooth would trade with Headless Rider, any other zombie that they attack with. Not Tainted Adversary, so we may have to take three from that. Yeah, hopefully we draw a creature and we can cycle Shelter Thicket for something else. Maybe that Terror of the Peaks followed by Galta. Boom. Or just a Sweeper at this point. We'd only lose the token. We'd take everything out that they have. I imagine some counter spells potentially being partially in blue. But it's probably just a lot of zombies. Seven. Huh. Interesting. Okay, that's not really bad whatsoever. Make a sacrifice our 
little token here. Good stuff. Shifting. There you go. Alrighty. Shifting for two. Get us something good, sheltered thicket. Oh, another shifting. I like that. looks of that I was thinking of tapping Gwenna for two green to give the shifting ceratopses both trample but yeah. I think while well, they can take one thing has to block, so I, I... Well, they got us, unfortunately. Pretty sure only one thing blocks. No. Two things. Yeah. If they get another Lord next turn, they would have lethal. They're not going to block with the Blade Stitch Scab, that's for sure. Two things aren't going to block one thing to take it out. Blade says scab can't block shifting ceratopses. Cross your fingers, they don't get a lord. Oh boy, here goes nothing. Down to the wire. There's a lot of zombie lords, that's why I'm scared. Oh, we got him. One. Whew. That is just a beautiful sight to see. Wow. Wow is right. Good stuff. We didn't even need a sweeper, which is pretty crazy to say. Still, it's, it was right to bring in the sweeper that would have absolutely decimated and equalized things. Most of our stuff is above three toughness, so it would survive those ones. But definitely, that's why I love Sheltered Thicket so much. If we draw it late game, of course, we want lots of lands, but we see it late game, boom. Cycle it away for two, and look at that hand. Wow, wow. That's Again, like I said, we can make two lands work with this list, which is absolutely insane. We got a Grease Fang again. What's going on? Last night, I faced two... No. Today, I faced two Grease Fangs in a row. I couldn't believe it. Fatal push. I think. Yeah, it was two back-to-back -back Abzan Grease Fangs. I don't know what's going on. I'm seeing it more. It's strange. I must have had a good performance recently uh, in some tournament. Still, Mono Blue Spirits is absolutely non existent. Hopefully, they leave it. Don't leave it. They're thinking about killing it. JDX, how's it going? Hopefully, things are going well for you. A little bit better than me. Facing a nasty, nasty Grease Fang. But, oh, we got it, folks. Gwenna plus Marauding. Eh, maybe. You know what? I'm going to go both Maraudings because I expect they're going to do some removal on one of them. Probably. Oh, happy to hear. Happy to hear you're continuing with that. There's that Grease Fang. They gotta get a body down. ASAP. One Marauding will block Asuka's, like I was thinking. 
It wouldn't be so bad. Either a fatal push or blocking a big thing gets us back to one of them. Of course, we were marauding raptor locked. Wouldn't have been able to go with Terror of the Peaks. But now... They could be dead, especially when we kill Greasefang and basically everything they're about to do. Boom. Untap Gwenna. Tap her again. Two red. Tear the peaks for free-ish. Lovely stuff. Play that land. Two green. Untap. Draw a card. Shoot him in the face. Okay, what do I want to do? Meh, I'll just attack. Hmm. Gwen wasn't going to be untapping Regis or Alpha, unfortunately. If we get Galta next turn, we get him. Marauding for one, ping some stuff. Little Regisaur, ping him for seven. We're in heaven and we get to 10 permanents. Boom, look at that. We beat Grease Fang, we beat zombies, we don't even need sweepers. Grease Fang got nothing. That's a redemption today because I've faced down uh, multiple times uh, Grease Fang going off on turn three, getting Parhelion two, and there was no recovering. Beautiful victory. I gotta say, uh, Terror of the Peaks, maybe this is it. Certainly felt like it today, throughout the day. It's legit. It's it's at least pretty decent. Valid. But uh, Grease Fang, we got the unlicensed hearse again, and Bouncer's Beatdown. We already get it done, but cut the Hunt Master. If they have removal, maybe we got lucky not seeing it, or they will bring it in. Certainly, they're going to be scratching their head wondering what they can do, if anything. Rounding pretty, pretty key, I must say. Hmm. I'm almost considering not even bothering with Bouncer's Beatdown. Unlicensed Hearse being good enough. Yeah. I think with the Sweepers and Unlicensed Hearse, it's going to be good. And again, we already took them out without needing any of that stuff. We certainly got lucky that they didn't get Parhelion 2 into the graveyard early. Oh, you thought that win was beautiful. Look at this beautiful hand to start. It doesn't get better than that. Thought sees maybe to rip one of these things, but when you start off with a hearse marauding Topiary Stomper, which we would be able to play, even if we're still at two lands with the cost reduction from marauding there. Kioros, wow. Thoughtseize, I, I would imagine. Hopefully we get lucky. They gotta be worried. They wanna see what we're gonna do. Cause, uh, we blasted them. Down to five. Hmm. Hmm. Parhelion. Grease Fang next turn again. Uh, turn three, Grease Fang. Pain. Oh, oh, look at that. We missed two fatal pushes. Hopefully they... 
Oh, what am I saying? Unlicensed Hearst to get rid of Parhelion. Yes, please. We'll wait to do its thing. Uh, we wait until Grease Fang targets that vehicle. And then we exile it and they don't get it out. Actually, we just do it now. They don't have multiple targets, so... That's good. That will just safely go Topiary Stomper if they have removal or something. Um, I like the looks of that. Kiora possibly next turn. Untapping a land, playing Marauding for two. Yeah, if they can't get rid of Unlicensed Hearst, we probably got him. Put that stop there just in case. Huh. Ooh, they got multiple vehicles, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, we just wait until they target it now. Hold on a second. Now we pop it. So it was this Sky Sovereign, and I'll get rid of that one. Boom. No worries. No fear. No limits. No excuses. That's how you use Unlicensed Hearse. They're probably crying, which is good. I don't care against this deck. Man, that first game was beautiful, but this is even more so. There you go, folks. That's probably why you don't see Grease Fang much. Woo! on fire tonight that was a gaping hole previously I wasn't using unlicensed hearse but again I would face Grease Fang maybe once every couple days but uh, well 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 like I was saying probably don't even need that bouncer's beatdown if we can see the hearse or a sweeper That's a highlight match. Who doesn't love to see the greasy rat get blasted away in absolutely beautiful fashion like that? Cam Bear. Hmm. Oh, never. Ooh, okay, well, it's a little bit better. It's kind of awkward with three root bound Craigs. Uh, certainly could be a lot worse than that. Yeah, plate safe, send one shifting to the bottom. Hmm. Oh, oh, weird. Yes, please. Phew. Still would have been okay, but uh, keeping up the curve. Lovely stuff. Hopefully, we're marauding is sticking around. Fatal push or some removal, I imagine, is going to happen. Hmm. Oh, it's uh, oh, it's a lot of tribal decks tonight. Well, drifting it is. That's where we want to be against a deck with a decent amount of counter spells, a decent amount of creatures that are blue or part blue. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Wow. Paid a push on. Uh, hey, that's okay. At least shifting is still sticking around. Ooh. Could have gone stomping ground there, but I want to maintain maybe 
that one green to give shifting reach. Actually, what, what am I thinking? We're just swinging for the fences here. Especially if they have some black removal for shifting. I want to get the maximum benefit of dealing some damage. If they don't have removal for shifting and they don't have a straight black creature, we may just kill them. I think we'll have enough aggression to do that. Unless they have some ninjutsu. Hmm. They could have something strictly straight black that's going to take out shifting ceratops. Heartless act. Or it's partly blue based and they can't target shifting at the moment. But yeah, you see here, shifting already is a good body, but when it gives you a sticky, painful threat, game one, uh, it's extra welcome. If they ever decide what they want to do. At least they have copy, copy, coffee. Haven't had enough coffee, I guess. Would have liked to see that Regis or Alpha. Actually, we'll get to seven lands next turn. We'll be able to attack with the Topiary Stomper, so... That's actually also pretty good. Probably better having to... Oh, Terror of the Peaks. Hmm, that's a tough one. I'd like to go Terror, but we still probably will get it done anyways when we go with this Topiary. And they might have a counter spell. So we'll draw it out for this. Luckily they didn't. Good stuff. That's got to do the trick, being able to attack with the other topiary as well. Aha. I figured they had something blue-based. That's okay. We could possibly go Tear of the Peaks plus topiary next turn. If we draw another land, we'll have a total of eight, and both those things is eight. That would kill him. Oh, hope for it. Hope for it. I don't think they can attack with a whole lot, but again, everything is partially blue, so... They have to kill us in two turns. Because we're going to kill them in two. This turn plus another one of them. Oh, let's get a land. Oh, uh, oh. Other land, you can do it. Land. It's not a land, unfortunately, but oh no, we still get them. Tear of the Peaks, boom. Rotting Raptor, two. Nice. Yes. That's where it's at. You can't block. Protection from blue. Woohoo. Oh boy. Dinos do it all. They have it all. But I'm thinking Bouncer's beat down. Actually, brother, uh, Brotherhood's End, maybe. Those are five fours, though. Actually, no, we would have killed him. Taking out the Silver Fur Master would have dropped all the Soaring Thought Thief's toughness down to three, and then they also would have died. Uh, chain effect. Yeah. And they got some Planeswalkers. The Ninja Planeswalkers, so... Uh, that stuff. Hunt master. Pick him to the curb. Certainly on fire tonight. It has been a blast so far, I must say. I'm just glad it's performing. I figured it would at least a few matches here. 
of course sometimes you get unlucky you don't draw what you need you don't draw any lands you have maybe too few but um, that's something you'll never escape completely certainly gonna mulligan this it is better I say I just send Regisaur to the bottom double terror is gonna be terrifying Okay, well, well, that is, uh, that is good. Even if I had drawn a sweeper, I'd still try for marauding. Although we don't have um, top, bottom, yeah, let's still do it. We do not have an ether gust, unfortunately. Hopefully it's not the full place that that was always painful when I faced mono blue spirits. Oh man, I uh, I did not like that one bit. Feeling it. As expected, the fatal push. Yeah, if we see a sweeper. We'll be off to the races. Luckily, they haven't milled a sweeper yet to gain that information and have us lose it. No sweeper. Sweeper on the top. Mill to the sweeper. You can do it. Ah, there we are. Well, at least we get to hopefully tear next turn. Being five, we dodge Fatal Push quite nicely. Oh, phew, okay, still, still not a sweeper. This is good. Let's try for one and hope there's no counter spell. Ether Gust. Aha, okay, okay, <laughs> nuts. Shifting Ceratops, where are you at? At least we have enough lands at this point. We could turn on Topiary Stomper next turn, playing a land, getting to six, and then Topiary getting to seven. At least we still have a, a terror, but we're already down to ten. Cross your fingers. Oh, does he live? He lives. Oh, he lives. Good stuff. Oh, we're not blocking that. Oh, boy. They haven't seen a sweeper? Good. They haven't... Oh, look at this. Folks, if they don't have a counter spell, cross your fingers... Cross your claws with oh, phew. Uh, four for thought thief. Three for silver for take that stuff out. We'll be able to trade with the thieves guild with that dino token. Actually, we just play Galta and win. What am I thinking? I don't know about you, but uh, one hit KO, massive damage. If they can't kill Galta, they're dead. They would have killed Terror of the Peaks already. Folks, I may be on to something here. Exciting stuff. Wow. Hmm. Two green for 12 damage to target opponent. And a 12 12 trample haste. Nothing compares to that. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. Do, 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 do. Hopefully this continues. Certainly seems 
like that's going to be the case. I'm, I'm glad the name of tonight is living up to it. So anyway, I started blasting and I just never stopped. My. Don't even need Gwena sometimes, but certainly having Gwena just to accelerate, barf everything, as long as we drop a tear of the peaks, like you saw, that might be enough. Regis or Alpha, five for two bodies plus uh, seven damage split up, which is quite nice. You can take out two separate creatures. A lot of creatures, one for four, one for three. If I had three lands, I would risk it because we got the two lovely stuff right there. I guess I could risk it. Uh, no. Oh, better. All right. Phew. Send a forest to the bottom. Throw the Rockfall Veil off to the side just so I don't accidentally play it and think it is Rootbound Craig. I've done that before and it's a sad time. We're facing uh, maybe Hammer Time. Is it? Huh. Odd. What do we got going on? Come on. Hmm. Interesting. Well, if everything works out, we may just get Terror of the Peaks next turn. Hope for that. I imagine they have some amount of removal, so at least one of these guys is going to get killed this turn. Bounced. It's not the end of the world. We still might get Regisaur next turn if we draw that fourth land, which is going to be pretty devastating for him. Not quite. Where's that fourth land when you need it? Oh, ouch. Still no real idea what this person's trying to do. Odd. Phew, we got it. They are stumbling in the lands. We were stumbling a little bit. We hit that break point of four. Lovely. Next turn, get him with Galta, I hope. Boom. Well, we saw a bunch of creatures, it seemed. Uh, again, not too sure what they're on about. But it seems like enough creatures that I'll bring in Brotherhood's End, Anger of the Gods. Take out Huntmaster. Uh, they have lots of stuff to kill it. Lightning Strike and likely other things. Play with Fire, of course, for two damage. Uh, Huntmaster dies to a slightly swift breeze. So against this deck, makes sense to take it out. Although Battle Mammoth could be pretty nice if we do land it. They have lots of stuff that targets us. Drawing a lot of things. Ah, I'll keep it out. pretty fast and explosive. They might have done too much by the time we would be playing Battle Mammoth anyways. Lots of cheap things. That hand, absolutely. I saw three. I saw Topira and Wayward. It was a uh, no-brainer at that point. Even if Maradon gets uh, killed, bounced, whatever, we still get to go Topiary. Possibly Wayward if we draw another land, but if we're still, of course, just sitting on one, I mean, Topiary, it's got to be. Ooh, yeah. If we get another land next turn, we uh, almost would have Galta. Hopefully Regisaur. Either way, we will get to five with the second topiary there. The Royal Scions, huh. Just a uh, generic, is it aggro? It seems to be. Is it a problem? I don't know. Not so much if we get a sweeper. 
Gonna have to watch out for the Royal Scions there. They're minus eight ultimate. Draw four cards when they do deal damage to any target uh, equal to the number of cards in their hand. That'll be lethal if they pop off with that. Hmm. We have to pretty much take out or drop the Royal Scions a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, it's got to be Regis or Alpha and hope they don't have Lightning Strike for the token. Phew. We still had one turn, I guess, so we could have could have gone Marauding plus Galta. Either way, next turn, if everything is still sticking around, we should get him. I might just use Regisaur to block and stop painful things from happening. Aha, uh -huh. I see. Forcing us to block Feldon. He's not gone because of first strike, but maybe they have enough damage to just kill us straight up. Surge engine. That's the first time I've seen that thing. Well. Let me see. We can't go Regisaur plus Galta, unfortunately. Brazen Borrower would kill us let me think yeah it's too bad we had to use regisaur to block nope nope we can't do it if galta could get haste and we were also able to attack with topiary stompers i think it would have done the trick or, of course, if we had a sweeper, I definitely would have done the trick. Big time. A brazen borrower, pesky. Shifting ceratops would have been quite lovely. Maybe I should increase it to four. I've trimmed it down to three in total, I think. Just uh, not a lot of room for all this good stuff that certainly is doing the trick. Not quite going to cut it. One land. No siree. Who's... I'm going to try it. Send Domri to the bottom. I imagine he could be removed somewhat easily by some of their damage-based stuff. I'd prefer Topiary Stomper. Stable ramp with that land. Possibly could have actually just sent Wayward to the bottom since I don't have a whole lot. Oh, Marauding Raptor sticks around. Or we just get to that third land, so we go Anchor of the Gods. Aha. Uh -huh. That's okay. Oh, they got their own Tear of the Peaks. Actually, that's not okay. Ouch. Hmm. We're stuck, similar to how they were the first game, unfortunately. Pretty interesting. I've never yet seen a variation like this. Oh, phew. We finally did get it. But Topiary Stomper will ramp. I don't want to take out only a Robber of the Rich. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I imagine I'll play some creatures this turn, so probably going to be Anger. Might have to be that. Robber certainly is doing the trick. Ooh, they're going to go Marauding plus Gwenna. Oh, just take out Tope here. Okay, not bad. Lightning Strike. We're not dead yet. Gotta be this. Hope they don't have anything with haste, because then we're definitely dead. 
Oh no, Den of the Bugbear does the trick. Mm. Yeah, a little bit painful. At least we didn't drop down anything. So that is a positive. A wide range of stuff tonight, I must say. I'm kind of looking forward to the night in the future where we'll face four things in a row. It's always interesting, at least, when that happens. That was pretty quick. Solaire. Something red. Mono red. They're trying to throw us off with the... Uh... Oh, no, it's uh, Kruga Fires of Invention. I think I'm going to keep this... We'll give it a go. We got four lands plus Topiary Stomper to ramp, getting to five on turn four for Regisaur. Hopefully it's going to make him soar. At least we do have that uh, enchantment, some enchantment destruction, hate, back to nature, I think. One variation list that I'm working on, I think, cuts all of it. Just focusing on things that support the game plan of slamming guys and doing damage to the face and ramping. Hmm. If things survive, we could see that hasty Galta coming up. But they could go uh, fires of adventure in this turn for sure. Especially with that goblin token, even if they don't get a forest land, they will get to four mana. Yes. There it is. Fires. Getting us fired up. Warming us up because it's winter. Taking them long enough. No fires? You want to kill Topiary Stomper? Ah. I was going to say maybe they'll kill it, but Topiary Stomper is not a threat whatsoever at the moment. Actually, what I will do is take out Chandra, because uh, that thing, I don't like. It ramps, it gives them advantage. Uh, dropper on site. I've learned my lesson in the past. That is good. That is what you want to do. There's the fires. Yeah. All right, five. Something nasty is going to happen, but at least it looks like we're getting Galta next turn. Shifting a fly somewhat easily past everything. Huntmaster for two, Galta for two. Uh, we can't give it haste, unfortunately, but... Like I said, shifting. And hope nothing bad happens next turn. Reflection of Kiki Jiki, maybe copying Sphinx of Foresight. Or just Karuga to draw a bunch of cards and then do nasty things. Again, being able to play one of those things for free after they go Kruga. That could probably do it. Cavalier Flames usually is painful, but we're sitting on a 12-12, which is going to be quite threatening. Hmm. Reflection of Kiki Jiki possibly tap into Copy Cavalier, getting 12 total power, trading with Galta next turn. Be at 7, be able to attack with lots of stuff. They can't cast any more spells or anything. I don't... Do they have lethal? Oh, they do. Almost. One, two, three, four. Pretty close. Uh, they would. 
They do. They do. Well, we'll wait and see if they see it. I know how they can do it, but uh, they do have it. Just seems like they might not have noticed it. Reflection to copy another copy of Sphinx of Foresight. Power everything up um, with Cavalier of Flame, giving everybody haste and uh, dead. That's odd. Hey, luckily, we're spared. Yeah. Huh. Odd. I'm not going to mouse. Oh. They missed it. Good stuff. Phew. Oh, and Beseju to take out fires of invention. I do like that. They were so scared about stopping the attack, they didn't see that they could have killed us, which is very fortunate. Whether or not it helps us win is another question. Yeah, Regisaur. Swing with everything. They'll certainly learn from their mistake the next turn anyways. And uh, we will be able to take out something somewhere. Uh-huh. Like I thought. When you see Galta, you're so scared, but you have tons of flying things. Like those sphinxes. Making a copy for one, they would have been sitting at 12. They would have only had to pump uh, with everything uh, once with Cavalier of Flame. Oh man, they're really increasing everything. Uh, I do have a mana give to give shift. I didn't last turn. Shifting was tapped because I had swung, so I couldn't have blocked the Sphinx. Um, I would have one to give it reach at the moment, but I was going to be dead next turn anyways. That's for sure. Maximum aggression. See who dies. We do take out both Cavalier of Flames, which is pretty nice. And we can take out Reflection of Kiki-Jiki because it is an enchantment creature, so let's keep that in mind. Hmm. It's not all bad. Maybe they're worried about Embercleave or something. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's all good. Fortunately, the opponent missed lethal, like I say. They're scared. There's... Oh, no, no. Uh, shifting was tapped. Or was it tapped? I don't know. I forget. Seems like even one turn ago was a long time, but uh, I may I may have missed that, yeah. Hard to say. Right. Down to three, pretty good. Bunch of stuff died, I like that. Now, can we do anything to anyone? Anyway, no. Unfortunately not. But yeah, Embercleave right there. Whew, Galta, double strike. 13-13, lovely stuff. However, well, we've got our single copy of Besage, you hopefully seeing that. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of painful, to say the least. I'm thinking Gadrak, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you can rewind. I, I forgot about that fact. Hmm. I don't really need the sweepers. Um, Chandra's Incinerator. Hmm. Kind of interesting if we get Terror of the Peak stuff going on. Hitting them in the face taking out their creatures but again like I mentioned at that point if we've got terror online and we're uh, doing direct damage to them we probably wouldn't need Chandra's incinerator anyways just the fact that it can come down for a single red because terror of the peaks may have already dealt damage to the opponent 
pretty interesting. Battle Mammoth. I think they just barf a lot of their stuff, a lot of their creatures for free and just go to town like they did there. I'll keep it like that. Again, maybe I could, you know, sprinkle in some back to nature's barrier breaches, uh, thrashing brontodons, of course, always a fantastic option. Never a bad idea, but, uh, yeah, like I say, even with the sideboard, this variation, not as varied for some of these painful things. Just not even worrying about anything, still focusing on doing the nasty stuff that this deck can do. Cross your fingers, no counter spells. Oh, no, no removal, lightning strike. Break, okay, okay. Juan, how's it going? Oh. Awakening Sun's Avatar, not yet. I was thinking about it, Juan. At some point, uh, the deck will win. Maybe I can name it Juan's Winning Naya Dinos. Juan's Awakening Sun's Avatar, Naya Dinos. Something like that. It's getting a little bit wordy for sure, but I'll try for Gwenna again and hope they don't remove it. Oh, it is. It is, Isaac. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been quite some time without uh, without thrashing Brontodon. Hmm. Terror is a terror, like it is here. Uh, yeah, definitely. Let's get things going. And hope they don't have um, something to stop it. Ether Gust, counter spell. They do something to Gwen, and we tap for mana in response, so we still get some benefit. It's not all bad. Hmm. Okay, we still got... Oh, not Shelter Thicket. All right, well. Two, three, five. Yeah, we definitely have to go Wayward Sword Tooth. That's going to allow us to play Sheltered Thicket here again. Certainly what I want to do. Do a nice little bit of damage next turn. If Gwen is still around, we'll pop off for sure. They basically have to win this turn or kill somebody. This is exciting, I gotta say. Just hanging on a thread, hoping they don't do anything because you know what is coming up. They know terror is coming up and maybe they will likely expect other painful things in our hand. Terror the Peaks technically for three with Gwenna there is pretty darn good. Of course, cost reduction maybe with Marauding turning terror to two Effectively, three, two, yeah, something like that. Hmm. Any day now. They don't have fires of invention, which is quite nice. Certainly figure they would have done that, or maybe they don't want to go fires because they want to use something at instant speed on our turn, which fires stops them from doing things like that. They could be weighing that fact. Hmm. Well, let's try for it again, see what happens. They either stop Gwenna or they stop Terror. Aha, aha, I see. Well, it's not so bad. Gwenna again. Agena, Gwenna. I 
Man, they gotta have uh, fires of invention. Saving stuff. Although they could still have gone Autoir because it's not actually a spell. It's a discard effect attached to a land. So that does get around uh, fires of inventions um, thing from stopping you playing spells only on your turn. A fantastic point with those legendary lands from Neon Dynasty there. Well, I'm not blocking. And I'm hoping they don't have a sweeper. Okay, they want to do something to her again. They must have fires in hand. Just, that's the only thing I can think is causing them to uh, take a little bit. Do, 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 do. Do 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 tear her up the peaks. Do do bum bum ba dum. Bum ba dum bum 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 bum. They're doing the math, of course, because they're the blocker. Well, they can't block that thing. Andra to take out terror. Okay, I see what they're doing. That's got to be what they're doing here. Interesting. That was odd. What's going on? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, well, they feel safe. Let's do what we have to do to get the job done, have some fun, and uh, maybe kill them. Throw the dinos to face. Good night, yes. We're doing good cuts, certainly. Oh, they just packed it in. They knew uh, they were done for. Yeah. Yeah, cut. You joined at the right time. Maybe you've been watching previously. Yeah. I saw. Very satisfying variation. I, just, I think I'm getting closer to the thing. I like the most. That involves Gwenna to tap and untap. Super ramp. Galt of her cheap. Galt of her free. If we're casting her for two green with Gwenna. Massive, explosive potential. I feel Terror of the Peaks must be the final key piece to what this variation wants to do, at least. Gotta be. Certainly it looks like a looked like a good hand already but even better with that fourth land getting us to five and lead the stampede which hopefully i get a show off for you guys because oh kiora the package of kiora and gwenna gwenna tapping kiora untapping and just gwenna already was disgusting but the fact we can just get to... well we already got benefit from it so that was um mostly a waste I feel which is pretty nice Galta um, hard to say the fact again that Galta can be actually tear the peaks let's hope cross our fingers but the, the fact that Galta can be played off in times for two or just dirt cheap with a terror just smoking them right to the face I like Ooh, it, it was worth a try. It was worth a try. But yeah, I like multiple copies of Galt, even though it might not seem like it's good. I still think it's pretty darn good. I'm going to go for Gwenna instead. Instead of Gwenna. Multiple tears. The more terror, the merrier. Chances are you only need one. The more Galt as I feel, the merrier, because maybe Galt is free. Quite a few times it is free with Gwenna. At the very least, uh, with Kiora and Galt, if you're playing her for free, 
It's like cycling zero, draw a card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on the... Oh, yeah, we're dead. What am I thinking? This. Never mind, never mind. We're not living through that. Well, you uh, you saw the lovely potential. Yeah. Oh, yeah, didn't matter, didn't matter. That's all right. Um, we've all probably faced or had the experience of that. What happens with Fires of Invention? That's all right. If they wouldn't have done their stuff, uh, it would have been very painful. We would have been able to attack with Terror of the Peaks. Um, yeah, we could have gone Topiary, deal four to the face. We would have had enough to play Galta for cheap. 12, 16 in total. Well, that would have killed them right there. They're already at 15. So yeah, if they hadn't done something to Terror, we would have got them. But they had lots of fantastic interruption. I actually like that. Uh, is it Fires of Invention? That seemed to do the trick. Seems like they really didn't need all the stuff in different colors. Kenris, the returned king from Throne of Eldraine. Pretty sweet stuff. I think it's, well, it's probably pretty consistent even if they have multiple colors. But just sticking to is it is, uh, is maybe the way to go. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. Ooh, that's, wow, yeah, please. Good stuff. We'll go Rootbound Craig to start. We don't have a mountain or a forest-typed land. So that still, at the moment, would always come into play tapped. And we really want to make sure we have three at least. Oh, we're finally facing Mono Blue Spirits. I gotta say, it's... Four, five days at least. If they get Curious Obsession on the Spectral Sailor, we're done. Uh, okay, good. Usually, uh, sometimes I just pack it in if they get turn two, whatchamacallit. I actually was going to try and play something. We, It would have been countered. Oops. My mistake. They're holding up uh, something for someone. The question is, will they use it on everything we try to play? One drops, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think may maybe tomorrow night I'll work on a, a one drop variation again. Lots of stuff for three. This list absolutely does make sense for that. Even though there is the potential for Hunt Master to accelerate out explosiveness with the cost reduction, helping to play more than one thing because of it. Hmm. Gonna try for Gwenna. I imagine anything we play will get countered, but Gwenna has the most potential to uh, do stuff. Yeah, that's probably gonna be it for us. We're not gonna be resolving anything at this point. They'll either hold up uh, spirits that can be played with flash or just counter spells, unfortunately. I'll try for Sheltered Thicket. Kiora. I think Kiora is maybe less threatening than Dami. Certainly they would counter this because it would protect against counter spells. Okay. I like it. That's a positive. I guess maybe we could have got Damri off. Maybe they didn't have any counter spells. Oh, Icon of Ancestry. Hopefully they play some spirits this turn. Seems they may want to. But since they didn't counter Kiora, maybe they don't have anything. Hmm. Well, we're about to find out. Try for Domri, see if it draws out that counter spell, of course. Oh, oh, that is very interesting indeed. That means we get Terror of the Peaks, folks. They are not having Aether Gust game one. Oh, 
this this could be good I never would have expected Darmy to resolve anytime they have two up is a scary thing maybe they were thinking of countering it or they had Geist Light Snare we used Darmy for three we would have been able to pay three they could bounce it with a Brazen Borrower, potentially. Oh, if they have to take out Domri, flashing in a Spirit, or Kiora, either one. We may have them here. And also, I like Terror of the Peaks on the off chance we do face Spirits. We've got a big, massive blocker that is negating a lot of their aggression if it ever does land oh folks we may just kill them right here uh, yes please for the rest of their turn their counter spells are nothing riding for two let's get that galta for two eventually mm. uh, right to the face we're just gonna kill them Regis or Alpha. We use Kira to untap a land, be left with two, and still be able to play the queen. I hope they're sitting on a bunch of counter spells in their hand. I'm not even gonna bother shooting down spirits. Oh, this is oh, this is one of the most satisfying matches I've had in days, I must say. The bane of my existence, this deck. It used to be. Got him. Oh, I almost targeted myself. Goodness. And of course, Darmy increasing the power of everything means Terror of the Peaks is doing even more damage. Oh. Wow. Wow. Bringing in Domri. Possibly these sweepers, but again, they know what we're all about. They'll bring in the ether gusts. It's probably going to be even harder to resolve something. Yes, Isaac. I don't care. Maybe some people think this deck is win more. I see it as just win. Do the trick. Two green for 13 damage to the face. Got to be good. Again, like you see, the incinerator here really doesn't seem needed, but... I put it in as a, a reminder, a placeholder, kind of Gadrak as well. Stuff that has that five power that could potentially come down cheap. Oh, I, fi I knew it was going to be expensive. Uh, I didn't know it was still going to be so expensive all this time later. But uh, I may have to splurge, especially if I keep playing a list similar to this that involves it. Oh, I just bought a couple of copies of Gwenna. Luckily, she was dirt cheap because nobody can really make a good use of her. But, uh, huh. yeah. Dinos already, they have lots of big, nice, fantastic bodies. But adding Terra, the fact we can pretty much not care what they've done throughout the game. We may have lethal... Oh, oh, yeah, oh, I know, I know, Isaac, uh, that's US, so Canadian uh, Terror of the Peaks is like $40, $45 with shipping up to 50 I think. I don't think it's only Commander, it may be mostly Commander, of course, you see a card that's been released uh, for quite some time, it's rotated out of standard, and when you see that expensive price, you definitely assume that for sure. But look, we we smacked them so hard that Mono Blue Spirits conceded against a deck where they probably had a good chance. I don't know if they saw Shifting Ceratops. I don't think they did, but Commander, yes, yes. Usually it's it's got to be Commander. Certainly you could abuse Terror of the Peaks in that format. Um... I can only imagine the terror 
that would happen when uh, it lands. Hmm. Scary stuff. Oh, it's insane regardless. It pulled three of them. Oh. I'm going to have to look, but the cheapest with shipping uh, was about $40 Canadian from Canada, I think. From in Canada. Uh, Baseju. I, I think I think Baseju might be a touch more than Terror of the Peaks. Uh, but it's certainly seeming like Terror may be um, the key piece. Got it. It got to be. 20, okay, 20, okay, yeah, Terra's, Terra's probably the most. So anyway, I started blasting and I blasted away most of the opponents tonight. I'm happy the deck lived up to the name, lived up to the meme. Um, yeah, wow, wow, that's all I gotta say. This, uh, this variation has some legs, but again, a list involving those one drops, four Elvish Mystic, uh, I think I'll try four and four, Elvish Mystic and Lanor Elves. Cut Hunt Master. May, maybe cut Marauding Raptor as well. I could see that. My only problem with those one drops, you want to see them turn one. You want to see them come down turn one. Any turn after that, it would have just made sense to play something for two. That's my only gripe about it, but they are good. Absolutely. Good stuff tonight. Didn't really need a whole lot. Luckily, we saw Unlicensed Hearse uh, just absolutely rip apart Grease Fang, so that's uh, staying in, especially since I've started seeing it a little bit more for whatever reason. Lanwar and Drover, huh? I think if I had to choose, it'd be Lanwar and... Lanwar and Huntmaster due to the cost reduction. Again helping oftentimes play multiple things uh, because you know shifting is reduced to three wayward is reduced to two turning wayward sword tooth into three with gwen of course lovely stuff right there yeah yeah i'll try four at least you know to start things off again because for uh, whatever reason a uh, preference mostly in four and a half years i don't remember maybe once using a dinosaur list which is pretty crazy thousands and thousands of games and matches over the years i've never taken the plunge not that it's bad or good but uh yeah 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 definitely and lots of sources of red the land where elves only green uh, hard to say We'll see, we'll see. It's going to be a good one, but uh, don't go anywhere. I have to highlight uh, the infinite win on the spot variation pathways. Yes, Isaac, prepare yourselves. A couple people uh, in the Spikes subreddit noticed this interaction. I remembered it. Um, I'm going to highlight this. Asrak the Arch Lich. With Marauding Raptor, it costs two. It has five power. Gwen untaps, we keep playing Azrak again and again and again and again. That means we win on the spot. When he enters the battlefield, if we haven't completed Tomb of Annihilation, we just never complete it, he's returned. We are completing Lost Mine of Fandelver. Fand Fandelver. No, that makes sense. Look at Dark Pool there. Each opponent loses one life. You gain one life. It, it's the lose one life part. You just have to do that enough times till they're dead. Boom, done. You play Asrak. If they're at 19 life, you just replay Asrak 19 times, you win on the spot. You need two lands, three creatures. Marauding Raptor, turn two, Gwenna, turn three for two mana. Oh no, you don't have the third land. What are you gonna do? Turn four, Asrak for two with Gwenna, boom, done. Win on the spot, doesn't matter what the opponent does, especially because it's lose life that actually is even better than direct damage. You're not targeting, you're not doing anything like that. 
I think this is a pretty fantastic additional way to win. I think it would be good to spice it up, you know, a extra out, you could say. Just the fact you can do it on two lands, five total cards. It's got to be decent. Pretty easy to splash, of course, when a tapping for the black mana we need, but also I'll switch out the sheltered thickets to add in Zyatars in a pinch if I really needed that source of black. Hmm. Yeah, wow. Exciting stuff. And I mean, if we had Terror of the Peaks, we'd only have to play Asrak four, five times perhaps. Asrak plus Terror. Oh, wayward out for thought Yeah, I could see that since I am technically dipping my toe, or my claw into black. I should consider thought sees. Even though I don't think I actually have a single copy. But yeah. Yeah, I'll leave. Well, you guys can look at that and maybe take some inspiration. Um, it makes sense. Yeah. Even if we, well, we would bounce Asrak. Even if we don't have Marauding Raptor out, just technically playing Asrak for uh, two, one. We'd have to pay one and we'd still get to play him a bunch. Go for the throat. John Dinos, it does seem pretty good. Isaac, I must say. Go for the throat. Yeah. It was fantastic seeing that be reprinted. Basically, some of the best removal. Again, I haven't really seen anything artifact creature related um, very much whatsoever. Uh, yeah. I would like it. Excuse me. Big time. Hmm. Something to think about, but I think uh, tomorrow night, uh, that Lanor or Elvish Mystic list. We'll see. But that was good. I'll leave it there for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed as much as I did seeing all those thrilling Terror of the Peaks. Hopefully it didn't give you nightmares and uh, you can sleep well, sleep sound, have a good night, good morning, evening, afternoon, whenever it is you are watching. And remember, there's always room for improvement. There's always room for a good time like tonight. Peace.